So there's a lot of really good reasons to come out, and I could talk about this for a very long time. Um, but there's kind of two core reasons. Uh, one of them has to do with other people. Coming out as an atheist makes it easier for other people to come out as atheists, uh, where it's, it makes it easier as a society, in a society that's hostile to atheism, if people know that there are other atheists in the world and see that there are other atheists who are good people, who are happy people, who are find meaning in their lives, who are, you know, making something out of their lives, when people see that, they see, hey, maybe this could be me. And people either who are already atheists but feel afraid to come out, um, or people who are maybe considering atheism but are afraid to because they've been taught that atheists are terrible people, when they see that there are other atheists in the world, that makes them feel more safe about doing it. So that's the, the socially responsible reason for coming out, is that you're helping other people. There's another reason, which is that it just makes your own life better, um, because you're being more authentic. Um, you're being true to yourself, and um, it's, it can be difficult to be true to yourself. Living an authentic life is hard. You know, you have to, to, to face difficulty, you have to face opposition. Um, but there's something uh, my friend JT Everhart says, which is that uh, would you rather be loved for who you're not, or would you rather be hated for who you are? And there's not much point in having people think that you're a great person if you're not being authentic. And if, you know, if people think, well, you're such a really great Christian, or you're whatever, it, but you're, that's not who you are, then it, that they, they're praising you and they're appreciating you, but it's not reaching you at your core self because it's, it's missing. And if you're authentic, you may get more flack, but the people who do love you and the people who do appreciate you, they're going to love you and appreciate you for who you really are. Um, so my 18 year old self uh, believed in a lot of woo spirituality. I was actually raised as an agnostic, uh, but I fell into a lot of like, you know, astrology and tarot cards and reincarnation and all of that kind of stuff when I, when I was in college. And the advice that I would give to myself uh, at that time is think carefully about why you think these things are true. What evidence is there really that these things are true? And be aware that, boy, it sure seems true or, you know, wow, somebody did this astrological reading for me and it just seemed like it really was all about me. Um, or somebody did this past life reading on me and wow, they sure really seemed to be getting at something. Um, there's a lot of reasons why that stuff seems to work and it has nothing to do with the supernatural. Um, you know, it's, you know, our, our minds are wired with a whole lot of cognitive biases. Our minds are wired to see patterns where there are no patterns. We're wired to see intention where there is no intention. Uh, we're wired to think that things that are really coincidental are really actually meaningful in some way. And, and if you study, for instance, things like cold reading, um, you understand that, you know, there's not actually that much that's magical. There's nothing that's magical about these things that I thought was magical. And uh, I would really like for, I wish that my 18 year old self had been just more of a critical thinker and had thought more carefully about why I think the things that I believe are true. Um, I don't just think it's okay to be an atheist. I think it's awesome to be an atheist. Um, I feel so much more connected with the world as an atheist now than I did when I was a religious believer, because when I was a religious believer, I was always kind of lying to myself. I believed a lot of things not because there was any good reason to think they were true, but because I wanted them to be true. I believed that I had an immortal soul that was going to survive my death and be reincarnated or whatever. I didn't really think about it very carefully. And not thinking about it very carefully is the key. I didn't think about these things because I really wanted them to be true and I wasn't willing to examine them. And that's not a very comfortable way to live. That's, there's kind of this unease when there's this nagging little voice in the back of your head that says, you know, there, this might not be true, and then you go, I don't want to think about it, I don't want to think about it, I don't want to think about it. That's not a very pleasant way to live. And once I accepted that, you know, my mind and my consciousness are a product of my brain, and when I die, they're going to disappear. That was a hard thing to accept at first, and I went through a difficult time when I first accepted the reality that I was going to die and that that was going to be permanent. But once I accepted that, and once I really embraced the world as it is, I feel just so much more comfortable. I feel more comfortable in my own skin, and I feel so much more connected with the world. I feel like I'm not fighting with reality. I'm not fighting with the truth. 
and you know, I, I walk around the world, the world and I just think this is so beautiful and the way it actually is, is so beautiful. I don't need to make up pretty stories about it. I don't need to make up lies about it. I don't need to con myself into thinking that things are true when they're not. Um, I can just embrace the world as it is and that is an amazing way to live. I, I feel, I can't, it's, it's so hard to put into words. I just feel this intensely intimate connection with the universe that I did not feel when I was lying to myself about the supernatural. I'm a blogger. I write for Greta Christina's blog. Uh, it's very imaginatively named. I'm a wordsmith. Um, uh, I also write for the online political magazine, Alternet. And I am a speaker for the Secular Student Alliance and for the Center for Inquiry. We are atheism.